Thanks for clicking. We had another interesting week in China's real estate crisis this week, with yet another developer, this time Shimao, defaulting on its offshore dollar debt. Good for you. The default is no doubt a reminder that the real estate crisis in China continues, despite its economy looking like it's rebounding after the zero COVID lockdowns. We also received news that the People's Bank of China, the PBOC, is looking to normalize monetary policy, taking money out of the economy in the hopes of avoiding the inflation that we're seeing here in the West, in the United States and in Canada. We never thought of that. However, we also received news that the PBOC might be moving a little too soon, as China's continual zero COVID policy is threatening to put a large portion of the country back into lockdown, and the Communist Party announced that they will keep with this strategy for the next five years. Given the damage that China's zero COVID strategy has already done to China's economy and its ongoing real estate crisis, this was definitely not great news. So what I want to do today is go over Xi Mao's default, discuss the PBOC's attempt to normalize monetary policy, pulling cash out of the economy, and then go over China's ongoing problems with COVID. As we'll see with Shimao, despite China slowly recovering from its zero COVID lockdowns, the real estate crisis is ongoing and doesn't look like it will be abating anytime soon. We'll have updates out on that crisis on the Chinese economy every Friday on this channel. If you wanna get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe. But for now, let's get into Shimao. We've talked about Shimao before on this channel as a Chinese real estate developer that was once considered strong and safe. What is really interesting here is that Shimao was once sort of considered immune to this really uh, because uh, they had been one of the higher graded or rated developers in the country. However, on Sunday, Shimao failed to make the payment on a $1 billion offshore bond putting the company in default. Though the company had failed to make an onshore bond payment, that is a bond payment to domestic creditors earlier on in the year, this is the first time that they failed to make an offshore bond payment, that is a payment to international investors. For its part, Shimao noted that it had missed other payments too, but wasn't clear on to whom those payments were owed. Awesome. Well, this is definitely not the first developer to default. Shimao is noteworthy as it was A, once considered strong, and B, signals that even in the post-lockdown period, when China's economy is recovering, the real estate crisis continues. It's ongoing and it's not going away anytime soon. Speaking of starting to recover, the PBOC is looking, as we said, to normalize monetary policy meaning it's looking to limit the amount of cash it injects into the system on a daily basis. So now that the lockdowns are over, the PBOC is hoping to pull excess cash out of the system, get the money out that's circulating that could very well cause the inflation that we're seeing here in the West, in the United States, and in Canada. While it might seem premature to try to normalize monetary policy so soon after the end of the lockdowns, especially with more lockdowns pending, which we'll get to, I think there is a real worry on behalf of Beijing and on the part of the PBOC that China could end up in the trap that we found ourselves in here in the West where they let things go too easy for too long and end up with sky high inflation. Might not have been the best idea. So the PBOC is trying to get ahead of the game and at least take some small incremental steps to get some cash out of the system to shorten the amount of liquidity that is out there. With that said, there's still a lot of caution and investor concern that China might be moving back to the lockdowns that we saw in the last few months. Despite just recently opening back up, Beijing and Shanghai are undergoing new rounds of mass testing after the discovery of new COVID cases, which is raising the concerns for further lockdowns. Given the damage that has already been done to China's economy from the perpetual start-stop lockdowns that have characterized the past few months, this is definitely not a good sign and is weighing heavily on the minds of investors. Stocks fell almost immediately following the announcement of mass testing and a growing concern over further lockdowns. And concerns were only amplified after Beijing Secretary of the Communist Party, Kai Kui, I butchered that, said that Beijing's zero COVID policy could last for up to five years. Immediately after the comment, Beijing attempted to scrub all remnants of it on the internet, 
but the damage was definitely already done, only raising concerns that China will not be backing down from this zero COVID policy. So we very well could be seeing years on of start, stop, lockdowns and then not and the ensuing damages that that will have to china's economy and not just on china's economy china as we've talked about many times is the world's factory they produce a large portion of the goods consumed here in the west so when china has production issues their inflation rate goes up and we import their inflation to canada Take that, you greedy fat cats. so as the cost of producing goods in china rises so too does the cost of those goods in the U.S. and in Canada, putting upward pressure on our own inflation rate, putting more, in pressure, putting more pressure on our central banks to raise interest rates even higher, which, as we're seeing, is causing all sorts of problems with our real estate market, with our economies, and we've only just begun. China's ability to effectively manage their COVID situation and get everybody back to work and effectively manage their real estate crisis will definitely have a big impact on us here in the West going forward. So we will continue to have updates out on China's real estate crisis, on its economy and on its progress with zero COVID every week on this channel on Friday. If you want to get those updates, make sure you click like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching.